Hello, True Health Seeker, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Learn True Health podcast. When I started the Learn True Health podcast, I was so passionate, and I still am, about holistic health because it saved my life. To paint the picture, in my early 20s, I was diagnosed with uh, hypoglycemia, so I would just feel like a train wreck most of the time. Uh, I had sh sugar cravings, uh, I was constantly hungry, kind of angry about it, so I was hangry. Um, mood swings, which I thought was sort of just residual from being a teenager since um, I was diagnosed with hypoglycemia in my early 20s, but I definitely had it. Now looking back, I can see that um, even in high school, you know, falling asleep in class, not being able to really fully concentrate, being very moody, which again, I thought it was the hormones, right? Because aren't teenagers all supposed to be moody? What now I see is that blood sugar and blood sugar swings cause moodiness. A lot of people are actually misdiagnosed with um, bipolar when they in fact have blood sugar uh, issues, blood sugar swings and um, irregular blood sugar when they really need to balance it instead of getting them on uh, some kind of medication for their emotional state, which is just ba a band-aid for one of the many symptoms of the root underlying cause, which is the blood sugar imbalance. And even that blood sugar dysregulation is not the root cause itself. There's actually several factors that cause blood sugar dysregulation. And then out of that causes even more symptoms. And so we're walking around with all these symptoms, not realizing that we have blood sugar problems. Now the statistic is that in the United States and very similar in other countries like Canada and Australia, that one in three adults suffer from diabetes or pre-diabetes, meaning that they they're have hypoglycemia or, or hyperglycemia, that they're, they're well on their way if they continue down the same path to developing type 2 diabetes. My grandmother had type 1 diabetes. In fact, she was one of the first uh, patients to receive insulin. And if she had just been born a few years before, um, probably wouldn't have made it out of childhood because of uh, type 1 diabetes and, and that insulin was so new to the scene. Uh, watching, Growing up and watching how she figured out how to balance her blood sugar as a type 1 diabetic, you know, um, there are several times when she ended up in a coma because she just overdid it or uh, under under utilized her insulin or uh, ate too much carbohydrates and didn't uh, didn't balance herself. But in times when she was very conscious of her diet and her lifestyle and her sleep and her emotional state and her stress regulation, her stress management uh, and her insulin levels, then she was fantastic. And and of course that that, that goes for any type 1 diabetic these days, but type 2 diabetes is a totally different animal because the body is able to produce insulin. Um, it's just that there's so many more factors going on. And so throughout my, my teenage years, I suffered from many of the symptoms of um, my blood sugar being out of balance. And then into my 20s, I was finally diagnosed with it, but really not given any tools. And I even went to some holistic doctors and I wasn't really given tools to help manage it. I remember when I was newly married to my husband um, in my uh, late 20s, we were driving in the desert just out of Vegas. I have a very clear memory of this day that we just felt like we had to get out. You know, you just got to, we had cabin fever. We had to get out of Vegas. And so we went for a drive and we drove north into the desert and then did a big loop around Pahrump and then came back into Vegas. But I remember driving and we had just started. We had just finally gotten out of Vegas. So maybe it had been 20 minutes on the road. And my, my hunger set in and I began to cry. And I never really had put words to it, but it finally came to me. And thank God, my husband is so amazing. He's just very loving and supportive and my rock. And he uh, created a, a safe place for me to just um, get very vulnerable and start crying, which I don't normally do. And I said, I feel like I'm a prisoner in my body. I, I just ate, I just ate before we left. And we're out of Vegas. And I 
I'm so hungry that, I mean, there was nothing in sight, you know, we're in the middle of the desert. There's nowhere we can't pull over. But if, if there had been, I would have said, pull over, I have to eat again. And it was that intense feeling of, it was hopelessness mixed with frustration, mixed with anger. I was done. I was so sick of feeling like a prisoner in my body, having these, and I didn't know at the time that all my mood swings, that all my hunger, that it was all uh, being driven from my inability to regulate blood sugar. And it, I wasn't really eating crappy food. I've always been very interested um, in vegetables and in healthy fats and in protein. I've always been very interested in, in, in wanting to eat healthier food. But at the time, I was just, whatever the problem was, I was so done with it. And that's when I started to seek answers. I started to make small changes. I started to seek out different holistic healthcare practitioners. Uh, I started to play around with different macros, eating different complex carbs, or maybe eliminating complex carbs, different diets, all in the attempt to get rid of that hunger that, that was driving me, that constant craving, that constant, you know, up and down um, of the blood sugar swings. And so it wasn't until we left Las Vegas and moved to Seattle that I found some naturopaths, started studying with them, figured out the right supplements and the right lifestyle and the right diet and everything lined up. And I was able to get off of metformin uh, I completely reversed my type 2 diabetes. I reversed my chronic adrenal fatigue, which had been, uh, w which is directly related to blood sugar. I was able to end chronic infections. I began to get my memory back, my mental clarity, my emotions balanced. All of a sudden, I wasn't getting frustrated and angry at other people. I wasn't lashing out. I wasn't sobbing out of nowhere. I just felt balanced. I began to wake up with energy, mental clarity, and I felt grounded. I felt even keel. And this all came from figuring out how to balance my blood sugar and my fertility. I was diagnosed at age 19 that I could never have kids. And out of all these changes I made, I got my fertility back. I was able to conceive a very healthy and wonderful child, and he's doing fantastic and so am I. And so this journey that I've been on in terms of figuring out what, what was the root cause that made blood sugar go out of balance and what could I do to bring blood sugar back into balance. I have become so passionate about helping others that in the last seven years, uh, I've been sharing with people uh, and, and, you know, want on an individual basis, they've been coming to me and I, asking what they can do to, to um, no longer have their blood sugar issues. And my results replicated. Every time I shared with them what I did and gave them the advice that worked for me uh, and all the things that I figured out along the way, I could see the results again and again in them. And that was very exciting. I wasn't really planning on going this direction as a career at the time. I was just I, I figured something out. I, I, I solved a problem of years, the, of years of suffering that I had, all my teenage years, all my 20s, something that I'd suffered with for, yeah, about 20 years. I reversed it. And for the last seven years, I have lived without that problem. So I'm, anytime I bump into someone who has the same, has the same problem, I want to help them. And if they're open to it and they want to make the right changes, I've loved helping them and seeing the results. It's very exciting. So in the last year that I've been doing the Institute for Integrative Nutrition health coaching program, it started to grow in the back of my mind, this idea that, hey, you know, I can really, I've helped people reverse their blood sugar issues. I did it in myself. I am very confident at being able to help people do that because I have. I've reversed it myself. I've reversed it in others. I can I can help people. And so my husband, who <laughs> he was the one that that kept pushing me and nudging me, he said, "You've got to do this. You know, you're so good at it. It's so natural to you." That I, I went for it. I, I said, "You know what? That's it." I'm going to be a blood sugar coach. I'm going to be a blood sugar health coach. And I'm going to help people 
who, like me, were suffering and they want to get on the other side of it. They want to no longer have their blood sugar issues. Because when you, write, when you balance your blood sugar, it is so much easier to get more energy. It's so much easier to lose weight. It's so much easier to exercise. It's so much easier to find your grounding. So if you have other health goals, like maybe you want to have more endurance, maybe you want more mental clarity, maybe you just want to be more emotionally balanced and feel stronger in your life. Maybe you want to be able to wake up in the morning and have that energy and jump out of bed. Maybe you don't want to feel hunger all the time, or, you know, maybe you want to break that cycle of constantly thinking about your next meal. And, or maybe you have weight loss goals and all of those and plus hormone regulation, decreased stress, that all is directly related to blood sugar. In fact, chronic pain and blood sugar are direct re directly related because blood sugar dysregulation um, causes the, the body to have more. So high blood sugar causes the body to have more inflammation in the body and inflammation and pain are directly related. And so there's so many things you couldn't even imagine that could change in your life when you balance blood sugar. Now you may not have diabetes right now. Um, you may not have even been diagnosed with hyper hypoglycemia, but if a lot of these symptoms ring true to you, you may have the beginning stages of blood sugar dysregulation. And so checking things like your morning, your fasting blood sugar um, might be off. Maybe the rest of the day you're fine, but those numbers are off. So we got to catch it. We want to catch it as early as we can. I'd love to help you. If you are someone who goes, yeah, you know what? I would, I really don't want to be hangry anymore. I really want my energy back. I really would love to have these, all these problems gone that Ashley just mentioned. I would love to help you. So if you would like to have regular blood sugar, finally, I would love to help you do that. Uh, I feel like it's my life calling. It's my mission to help as many people as possible to gain healthy blood sugar levels. And so many wonderful things will, will come of it. You will be telling me, like so many others have told me, I can't believe it. I have so much more energy. I have so much more mental clarity. Um, my cycle is regular. My emotions are stable. I'm not as hungry. Oh my gosh, I could skip a meal. I didn't even think of it. I'm able to lose weight. Or another thing is inflammation goes down. And so maybe you don't have weight to lose, but maybe you want some puffiness gone. Like you want that water weight gone. I'm telling you, Blood sugar regulation brings on so many wonderful, positive things in your life. So if you would like help, I would love to help you. Please go to my website, bloodsugarcoach.com. That's bloodsugarcoach.com. Click on the button to get your free consultation. You get to set up a time to talk to me. Let's talk one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see how I can help you. I'd love love to help you gain your life back. And it will feel like getting your life back. It was such a night and day difference for me when I finally got balanced blood sugar. And I'm just thrilled to be able to help you as well. So please go to bloodsugarcoach.com, fill out the form. Let's chat. I'm really looking forward to helping you. If you know anyone who has type 2 diabetes or even type 1, actually, I have a lot of amazing um, tools that I can give a type 1 diabetic to help them to just maximize their blood sugar regulation as much as possible. In fact, I uh, know that with type 1 diabetics, you, when you balance your blood sugar, you can actually end up using less insulin. Uh, which is very exciting. I do have a person that I've worked with that was able to reduce their levels of insulin that they needed because they gained more balance. And that's very exciting for a type 1 diabetic. So if you have any friends that are type 1, type 2, hypo or hyperglycemic, or just have all these symptoms, and it's quite possible that they're having a bit of blood sugar dysregulation, there's a way to get to the root cause by shifting certain things in the lifestyle, in the diet, in the in supplementation where needed, and in your exercise routine, there's there's certain very specific things to do. You don't have to you don't have to throw the whole kitchen sink at someone. You know, that was the thing. I tried everything and I figured out what works. And I'd love, love to help you or help your friend achieve those results. So please let them know about bloodsugarcoach.com. 
if you have someone in your life who has this problem or you yourself, please go to bloodsugarcoach.com, fill out the form, and I'm really excited to talk to you. Now, today's interview is with a wonderful woman who I love. She created something called Mind Zoning. Uh, it's very neat. She shares a little bit about that today in our interview. And uh, I think it is uh, fundamental when it comes to making any positive life changes. She teaches how to shift the mindset uh, to begin to see the possibilities and bring on new ways of thinking and new problem solving in areas where you may have been stuck or stagnant with this problem. So it's very exciting stuff. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for sharing the Learn Your Health podcast. And please go to bloodsugarcoach.com. I look forward to talking to you soon and helping you to gain the blood sugar that you've always wanted to have, normal, healthy blood sugar. Welcome to the Learn True Health podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 176. Today we're in for such a treat. We have with us Krista King, who is a wonderful expert in helping us to uh, master that mind-body connection, shed that fat mentally and physically. Uh, I was on her show, Fitlandia, and uh, it's such a cool podcast. Highly recommend you guys check it out. Uh, the links to Fitlandia is going to be in the show notes of today's podcast. Uh, Krista, I've been really looking forward to this interview because I feel like we're kindred sister spirits in this uh, <laughs> fight to help people um, discover holistic health and get their life and their health to the, the best place possible. It's not about just being healthy. It's about op optimizing every area of our life so we can have increasingly wonderful, juicy, thriving health. And that, yes. that's what you do too, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely, Ashley. And, and I agree, we are kindred souls on a quest to redefine what dieting means and, and actually help people create a, a life of health and vitality for themselves and create a lifestyle that they can actually enjoy. Yes, excellent. Well, I'd love for you to first start by painting the picture and sharing the story of what uh, what happened in your life that allowed you to discover this journey and, and want to dedicate your life to helping others achieve their health and life goals? Yeah, absolutely. So about five years ago, I had literally reached the end of my rope. My I was 50 pounds overweight. My relationships were suffering. I was overwhelmed. I was crying almost every day at work. I had this intense... Uh, executive level VP position with a company that had a lot of politics going on in it. And I was just done. I literally Googled a uh, soul retreat because I knew I just had to like break away and kind of reset. And I spent uh, five days with 11 different practitioners and it completely 180'd me. Within four months from that time, I became a certified hypnotherapist. I got a second life coaching certification and then later went on to become a nutritional therapist. And through that entire process, not only did I crack the code for my own body and what was happening with me to get back into a healthy lifestyle, but I also found what was really missing in the diet and fitness industry was helping people address the deep neural pathways in their brain that drive 90% of their behavior. <laughs> So that started Fitlandia. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, <laughs> I love the name because it reminds me of Portlandia, right? That TV show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're, you're making it fun, right? So you're making, oh, yeah. getting fit, uh, you know, the, and, and also I like, I like going to this mystical place called Fitlandia where yes. I feel like I don't stick out like a sore thumb because I'm such a health nut. We all belong in Fitlandia. We can all talk about um, you know, our favorite uh, recipes or our favorite uh, ways of detoxing or feeling better or de-stressing. So with this mystical land in my mind, Fitlandia, it's like the, uh, like the, the, the Peter Pan of health nuts, right? Yes. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and that. And the name was very intentional because um, I know I'll be able to share with you a little bit more in a moment about mind zoning, but there is this kind of like whimsical, slight woo, um, but really deeper connection with the mind, body, and soul and what it means to create a healthy lifestyle. So Fitlandia um, not only 
and my based in Portland and, and Fitlandia was born in Portland. So there's that fun connection to the TV show, but it really is just this safe place. Um, but it's also this, this sense of community and, and space, just like you were talking about our core values. Uh, one of them is being very inclusive. So inviting everyone to come with their authentic selves as they are releasing shame and know that they're on a journey and there's other people that are right beside them to support them along the way. What's up with shame? I mean, what is up <laughs> with why, why is there so much shame hidden in the nooks and crannies of our psyche when it comes to our, our own body image and our own idea of what healthy looks like? Yeah, I, well, I, you know, we've been taught willpower, right? For, you know, the whole dieting, the, the big time dieting, you know, phase came in the seventies and eighties. And I, I grew up with Jade Fonda. I grew up right. watching my mom's <laughs> exercise videotapes and trying to keep up with them. And I, I think I was like 11. I was super fit as a kid. I was a kid. I was a kid uh -huh. and yeah. I probably didn't have an answer fat on me. And I was a total like athletic kid. And yet when I couldn't keep up with like the Jane Fonda workout tapes, my mom had, I, I beat myself up. I thought there must be something wrong with me. Well, that's just it, right? Is you're taught that here's the formula, here's the way to do it. Willpower is going to keep you on task. Just every myth out there. You got to count calories. You got to restrict calories. It's, you know, the low fat craze. All of that is just that. That's where the shame comes from. It comes from all these myths that add up to tell us that we have failed when actually it's the diet and fitness industry that have for, you know, uh, 20 plus years failed us. And now there's more research coming out to get us back on track to uh, help us identify and understand our bodies, what's happening, happening not only physiologically, but what I really focus on is those thought patterns that drive our behavior to understand that until you change those deep rooted thought patterns, your brain, your primal brain is going to kick in and take you to a pattern of behavior around food, uh, sugar, specifically sugar, refined carbs, and alcohol to make us feel safe when we're in a stressed state. We've learned since infancy that sugar, refined carbs, and then for a lot of us later in life, not all of us, but many of us later in life, the alcohol then comes into, a, into play in order to manage those emotions. So I'm here to say, um, you can release the shame because it's not your fault. Your body is wired to feel safe. Mm, that is interesting. I, I, looking at how we evolved, you know, people say we've been here for over 2 million years, however long we've been here and uh, however long we've been surviving on this planet. We've obviously have these survival mechanisms keeping us alive. And, and the craving for carbohydrates, you know, and, and sugar and then the brain, you know, triggering all those wonderful, um, happy chemicals, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, similar to cocaine, right? Or heroin lighting up those parts of the brain when we eat, uh, carbs or eat sugar, um, is part of that survival mechanism. And, and that, and then they, they lay, they lay it out in our food. Right. So I remember growing up, my mom was super restrictive. I couldn't have anything that sugar was added to it. And so of course, the second I turned 13, like I completely rebelled and went out and ate the Halloween candy I wasn't allowed to eat. And, uh, and I had that experience overnight of my, of my, uh, my body changing, my hormones changing from, from how much sugar I ate. Sure. Um, and it was, it was just amazing that, that my, my brain wanted it more and more and more, the more I had it, the more I wanted it. And it's just really interesting how, um, we've been taught that we're wrong we're bad and wrong for having these cravings that we need to restrict. We need to eat lower carbs. We need to exercise more. And then, and then when our brain, uh, fights us because it's part of that, um, survival mechanism, and then we're, we have a lack of nutrients because we've been eating crappy food. And so now we're fighting this craving for nutrients, <laughs> craving yeah. for sugar, you know, craving for something to comfort us. Cause yeah, uh, carbohydrates do have that, um, calming, temporary calming effect on the nervous system. Uh, and, and we feel like we're being pulled in many directions. And I, I describe it as, uh, feeling like you're a prisoner of your own body. 
And then, oh, yeah. and then we turn around and blame ourselves. We're the yeah. ones that are, are bad and wrong for, uh, for feeling this way and for not being able to stick with it. And now we're just discovering that there's, that fat creates hormones like leptin, which the hypothalamus, if, if you get, have too much leptin, the hypothalamus can't hear the message anymore. And then your, your body fights you to lose weight because the leptin levels are going down, but the hypothalamus thinks that you're emaciated when you're 300 pounds. So we've got, we seem to have all these, um, crossed wires going against us. And what we're told is you just don't have enough willpower. You just have to like, you just have to do it. Right. I I have this love hate relationship with the biggest loser, that TV show, because I I love the idea of inspiration that we can all transform people who felt felt like stuck their whole life can transform. I hate that they, they show people losing huge amounts of weight by working out eight hours a day and eating in eating some kind of low fat diet that's low right. low calorie low fat diet which is so unsustainable for the body so it's 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 sending the wrong message and and uh, every year i'd watch the i'd watch the show i'd go back to the gym i'd beat myself up more i'd, I'd eat um a really bad you know quote unquote healthy diet uh and and i wouldn't get the results of the show got and then i would um i'd feel more and more pain because I would beat myself up because there's clearly yeah. I'm the problem that this look, it works on TV. I'm the reason why it's not working. And right. and so there's so <laughs> much guilt and shame and you know, what is up that and then and then we're, we're body shaming, you know, these children that are going through puberty and um, you've got, you know, social media telling you what to look like. You've got uh, all the models. You look at um, all the magazines where they're they're. Uh, edited you know the the image of the woman is completely edited yeah and and so we're just we're taught that you have to look like barbie or you're not perfect so how do we break that cycle how do we how how can we unconsciously get to this root cause and release that because if we could just start by not having that shame and guilt then we could start making healthier choices for ourselves instead of beating ourselves up and going down a path that ultimately will cause more yo-yoing and hurt our metabolism further yeah absolutely well i think the first thing for everyone listening to embrace is that every single body is different so what works for me might not work for you um, and, and even once we find that ideal dietary plan that works best for our body, where we feel great, our energy is wonderful, our productivity increases because our focus increases, our sleep improves, our digestion improves, that we still have this natural state that our body wants to be in. And some of us are going to be bigger than others. But that doesn't mean that we're not healthy. And so really, it's coming to a place of, and and I think intuitively, most of us know what our quote unquote healthiest weight is. Um, But there's other tracking that you can do, like what's your fasting blood sugar? What's your resting heart rate? What's your blood pressure? You know, there's there's other mechanisms we can use to see if we are in a healthy state. Um, So that's the first thing I want to share with everyone is understand that your body is different from everyone else's. So you want to model optimum health for yourself. Mm. So looking at the facts, getting, getting, getting clear with what's so like in terms of blood work, in terms of all the measurements, uh, Mm -hmm. just getting clear with what's so, and then, and then making a plan for where we want to be and, uh, and, and looking for how we can fill that gap. But, but come at it from more of a science standpoint instead of um, an emotional standpoint. It's interesting with, with certain diets, um, people might lose a bunch of inches and, and not lose a bunch of weight. And then eventually the weight comes off. And if you're only measuring weight, you might've, you might give up, you know, six weeks into that program. Whereas uh, if you hadn't also been measuring. And so sometimes it's great, like you said, to take the different blood measurements as well, because you shouldn't just, um, judge a health program by the scale. That's a very narrow view of, um, of, of making proper health changes. Cause sometimes you have to make 
Uh, like you said, resting blood sugar. Sometimes you have to make blood sugar changes and hormone changes and support that area of the body before the body can lose the weight, right? Because you yeah, got you got to get to the root cause. If 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 the root cause is a blood sugar imbalance, then then struggling with a calorie restrictive and 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 willpower and beating your body into submission is um, it's 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 not going to help to get to the root yeah, cause. That's exactly right. And and the other thing that you know we you kind of mentioned like when we're getting started, we have, we have a lot of thought patterns that we have to change when, you know, most of us, when we were babies, um, and turned one year old, we started having cake. Um, and that became the tradition. It's still the tradition today in North American culture. I don't know about other cultures, but certainly, certainly our own. It's very common to do that. Well, think about how that baby's interpreting that. They're they're filled with a room of people that are loving on them. Now they take in sugar. It fires up the reward center in the brain. They're like, yeah, sugar's good. So it's throughout our entire life that we're developing this neural pathway that says, hey, let's go get some sugar. Let's go get some refined carbs, which, which simil- acts similarly to, to sugar in the body. And then, of course, alcohol and or drugs or, or other things that fire up the reward center, too. So we have to start giving ourselves replacements for those, replacements for those thoughts. So just start to think about, for everyone out there, how what are the ways that you can manage your stress so that you can actually move closer toward your goals versus further away. So you can start with just a new thought pattern that says, I look forward to going for a walk when I'm stressed out. I look forward to a brisk walk in the middle of my work day. Um, Even if you don't believe it at first, that's okay. You keep (laughs) telling your brain that and over time it'll go, oh, I look forward to going for my walk every day. Um, Getting up early, making time to work out. Morning is the if you're not a morning person, I'm here to tell you, you can become a morning person. Um, in fact, I did a mind zoning that's actually called rising early. And if anyone checks out the Fitlandia podcast, they can listen to it there, but you can actually train your brain to get up early. And there's so many benefits that come from getting your exercise in the morning before you start your day. Mm -hmm. So anything's possible when we, when we literally set our mind to it. I totally agree with you. I am, I have never been a morning person. I, um, I, I reversed and cured my chronic adrenal fatigue so that, you know, in the morning was the worst for me. That was the lowest point of my cortisol levels when I had chronic adrenal fatigue. So I kind of, uh, grew up in my adult life thinking I'm not a morning person. Like it became one of my beliefs. Yeah. Well, clean up my diet clean up my, you know, bring in healthy supplements, bring in healthy food, shift my mindset, uh, increase healthy fats, like go more keto. And yep. I, all of a sudden I was popping out of bed <laughs> 630 in the morning feeling like, you know, how, how you get that second wind where you feel like that you have the most energy in the world at like nine or 10 at night. And you're like, yeah, what, what's going on? Why, why am I so awake that all of a sudden that's how I was feeling first thing in the morning. And now my husband and I, uh, no matter what, rain or shine, go for a hike. There's like these wonderful walking trails um, about 15 minutes away from our home in the woods. And uh, they say if you you make sure within an hour of waking that you get sunlight, even if it's cloudy, you get sunlight without a window, you know, blocking the UV, right? Like you get sunlight mm-hmm. on into your eyeball. It, set, it resets your circadian rhythm. And so we started doing that no matter how much I didn't want to go for a walk or I did want to go for a walk, no matter what, we were going for the walk. And um, I use this, um, you know, like MyFitnessPal where there's like a MyFitnessMapPal or whatever it's called on my phone and it tracks the... um, the, the, the hike. And so you can, you can see how, how long you walked and Mm -hmm. how far you went and what trail you took. And so you can see if you're getting better or worse or faster and, and how, you know, relatively how many calories you burned, although that's not that important. It's just a fun number to look at like a game. So I made it a game and I can't believe, I feel like a totally different person. Uh, I I can no longer say I'm not a morning person, although, you know, (laughs) my 20 year old or early 30 year old self would have like fallen off their chair if if they heard me now say that. But yeah, you can absolutely become a morning person. And and I love getting the the workout in early in the morning before everything else, because it just gets it done, gets it over with. And then the rest of the day, I'm feeling so much more clear 
clear headed and, and I have so much more energy. And what I love about it too, is that then in the evening, you actually want to go to sleep early and you don't want to stay up all night watching TV. Your body feels, right. feels ready to go <laughs> to bed, you know, so you don't feel like that tired wired at night. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you touched on something that I really want to drive home. When we exercise in the morning, we have to remember we're getting all those endorphins. We're pumping our brain full of oxygen that does so much to carry us through our day and really help with concentration, productivity, managing our stress in the day. It's just, it's really incredible the benefits that come with that. And I'll give a shout out to Hal Elrod. I just started, um, I grabbed a copy of his Morning Miracle and um, that has been life changing because I never thought I could get up at 5 a.m. I, you know, I, and I tend to be, a, I, I call myself a morning and a night person. I, I used to crash in the afternoon, but now I'm getting up at 5 a.m. Like on my own without an alarm to start <laughs> my day, start with gratitudes, affirmations. What's my intention for the day? And then getting in some exercise. And it's really been awesome. So for anyone that needs some like really amazing concrete strategies, I grab Hale's book, The Morning Miracle, and then I would also listen to episode 48 of the Fitlandia podcast where they get a mind zoning uh, that's called Rising Early. What is mind zoning? Why don't we jump into that? <laughs> yes. So mind zoning is uh, their audio recordings that are a identical to a guided meditation. Um, most of the recordings at Fitlandia Fitness are uh, my voice, but I also have some other voices that come in and, and do them too. And just like a guided meditation has like some really relaxing spa music, these are mixed with those um, as well. And then once listened to over time, you start to take on those thoughts, those suggestions. Um, but a lot of the mind zonings too are really geared to tap into the deep part of your mind. So that subconscious mind that houses that kind of those thought patterns and that programming so that you can start to create new ones. Um, I always recommend that people listen to them. It, the best is first thing in the morning because a lot of them get you really energized, but you're already in that kind of relaxed, somewhat twilight state. It's before the craziness of the day started. You just, you just, click into the website, you select the mind zoning that you, you know, that's going to work best for you in that moment, trust your gut with that, and then listen to it. And most of them are somewhere between five and 45 minutes, although I'm doing a whole collection of ones that are under 10 minutes, so people can get on with their day. Um, but when we're in a relaxed, focused state, that is when our mind can most easily and quickly take on a new thought pattern. So that's why we recommend it at those times. But certainly people can take a work break with them and they can do them right before bed as well. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about the unconscious mind, people think, oh, I don't want to be controlled or I don't want to take on thoughts that I wouldn't agree with. The unconscious mind has a uh, like a defense system. It's got a filter. It's got a filter. Yeah. You cannot manipulate someone to do what they didn't want to do. Like people go, well, the, their only experience of hypnosis might be uh, stage hypnosis. And what they need to understand is the only people that are getting on stage are actually extroverts that if given three beers would have done that anyway. <laughs> Whatever they did on stage, balk like a chicken, they would have done it anyway for three beers. Um, stage hypnosis is really interesting, but the reason why only a, a few people will go up on stage and do it is because it's it's it takes that extrovert who wants to on an unconscious level wants to do it. Uh, yeah. If you don't want to, like you can't get someone to rob a bank with with the hypnosis or with you know affirmations. Uh, your unconscious mind will only take on something that is in alignment with you. So if you, for example want to feel more energized and your, your, your mind mapping is about feeling more energized, then your unconscious mind will take that on as a positive suggestion yeah. because it's in alignment with you. I, I was once really afraid of my unconscious mind when I started studying hypnotherapy, um, in my early twenties. And, um, I went on to, to become certified in it as well because I found it fascinating and what was really interesting is I was worried that some kind of weird repressed memory would come up or, or that this darkness or this thing, something I, I was afraid of would, would, would pop up. And, and, and what happened instead was I realized that the unconscious mind up 
feels so safe and feels so normal and it feels so um, common because we're in and out of trance all day long. When you drive, when you listen yeah. to music, when you, when you watch TV, when you daydream, mm-hmm. our brain, it's actually how our brain cycles and processes and stores uh, memories is that it will cycle in, in and out of different trance states throughout the day. And so you're just utilizing the natural already occurring process of the brain by by doing guided meditation. And so I, I love that you call it mind mapping because I think sometimes hypnosis or meditation can um, scare people if they don't, if oh, they don't yeah. know it. Oh, yeah. I, I actually, yeah, I came up with the phrase mind zoning because we all know what it's like when, when we're in the zone, right? When we're super focused and we're just intent on one thing and that's exactly what is happening whether it's prayer whether it's meditation whether it's hypnosis you are relaxed and focused so that's where the mind zoning came from just to get you into a relaxed focused state yeah we all want to be in the zone yes exactly (laughs) (laughs) whatever zone it is we want to be in in the zone exactly (laughs) we know what that feels like and so it makes sense Absolutely. Now you've got a fun book coming out, uh, which is really exciting. Is this your first book? This is my first book and oh my goodness, what a journey it is. Um, as you've already shared with your listeners, I do the Fitlandia podcast. I can get up in front of hundreds, thousands of people and talk. I love to talk. I love to present, but, but writing is a whole different animal, but yes, coming out is strategic vitality, 11 small steps to a big transformation. Wonderful. And, uh, and now you've got some goodies that you want to give uh, the listeners of the Learn Trail podcast, which the link to it is going to be in the show notes of today's podcast, but you are uh, giving some goodies when they go to the special link and, yes. uh, and tell, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, this is really exciting. So for the pre-launch kind of celebration, early release, if people go to fitlandiafitness.com forward slash strategic dash vitality, they can sign up to get some bonuses. They'll get 50% off the ebook. They'll get 50% off of my program called 30 Days to Thriving. And I run that program four times throughout the year. And the next one's launching in January 2018. And then they'll also get three free mind zonings that are kind of like companion mind zonings to um, that go along with, with the Strategic Vitality book. So I reference them in the book and they'll get three of those that they um, can use alongside of it for free. Awesome. Now, um... I'd love for you to teach us something that we could do today to begin to see a difference in our, in our health and our life. Okay. So this is my all time favorite uh, technique. And it's, it's one of the 11 steps in, in the book that I talk about, but it's um, developing a positive attitude. And so um, I'll give a little backstory on this. First of all, we all have a negative bias. That's again, how our primal brain is wired Um, It actually served us very well back in caveman days because we were always on alert for danger so that we could either go through that flight or fight response. Unfortunately, we are presented with so much stress in our modern day that it's actually more taxing and it doesn't serve us well. So I like to teach people how to do reframing of their thoughts. And all that means is taking your negative thoughts and giving it a positive reframe. Um, the key is you have to catch yourself, yourself in a negative thought. So um, most people think that they're aware of their thoughts, but it's really, even I struggle with negative thoughts and I practice this reframing all the time, day in, day out. Um, so even if you think you're a super positive person and anyone that knows me in my day to day knows I'm super positive, but I deal with negative thoughts too, because that's just how my brain is wired. So I, the first thing you want to do is catch yourself in a negative thought. If you're struggling to do that, it's great to have a buddy do this with you. So whether it's a friend and you guys are just in normal conversation, whether it's your partner, your spouse, your kids, um, it can be a great exercise for kids. So for example, I, oh man, I don't have time to work out, right? That's a negative thought. 
That's an, that's a limiting belief. That's an, I can't, it's holding you back from something. When you catch yourself in that, you can say, Oh wait, I just said, I don't have time to work out. And you, and all it's so simple. All you have to do is say the opposite. I have plenty of time to work out. Now, the reality is most of you are going to look at your calendar and go, no, I don't <laughs> have time to work out and that's okay. I just want you to keep repeating. I have plenty of time in my day to work out. I have plenty of time in my day to work out. And then whatever the negative thought is, just give it that positive reframe. Because what happens over time is you start to create a new neural pathway in your brain. And think of that as like the blueprint that an architect plans out for the, the builder, right? So you're your brain is the architect. You're in the, it's creating the blueprint for the body to then go and execute. And what you'll start to notice over time, and this is where the whole fake it to make it idea came from, is you will actually start to take on those positive thoughts that you've been giving yourself. So even if you don't believe it in, at first, that's okay. Keep doing it. Keep noticing it. And you might start to get curious about, hey, wait a minute. I don't need to watch two hours of The Real Housewives of Atlanta or <laughs> whatever it is that you watch because that's my that's my guilty pleasure, The Real Housewives. I don't need to watch that. Instead, I'm going to shut down my technology at 8 o'clock. I'm going to go to bed early, and I'm going to set my alarm to get up early. You'll just start to notice over time through this reframing exercise that you make small, subtle changes, and you might not even notice you're doing it until you're already executing it. And it becomes easier the more often that you do it. Yeah. And you can, you know, jump on the treadmill or elliptical trainer, bring your cell phone and your earbuds and, uh, you know, stream it on Netflix or something while you exercise. It's like you can yeah. still get your junkie TV and you can just do it on a, <laughs> exactly. do it on a elliptical trainer. Well, and that's what the reframing will do is you'll start to, you, well, you'll unconsciously start to create solutions to make that happen. I, 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 I this, to this right there, I want to stop you and I want to emphasize what you just said, because that is the key is that, is that over time, if you focus on what you want instead of what you don't want, all of a sudden you're going to start solving the problem. Your unconscious mind will start solving the problem. That's, that is, that is, that is so pivotal what you just said, because so many people go, oh, come on, you know, just saying something in the positive is not going to do anything. And yeah. yet, and yet it does, because when we say I can't have, or I don't have enough of, and we keep focusing on that, like, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. I don't know. How am I going to pay my bills? I don't have enough money. Yeah. And if you keep That's saying, I don't have enough money. Yeah. yeah. You're just, you're going to keep focusing on that. You don't have enough money and there's no problem solving going on, which is, which is problem solving is the biggest stress relief in the world. Once you've solved the problem, it's like, whew. Yeah. And I'm going to give another example. I am a huge proponent of food journaling, especially if somebody's making um, a, a lifestyle change, they're giving up the standard Amer American diet, they're giving up processed foods. I always, I tell every member, every client that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, you've got to keep a food journal. And it without fail, I get the grunts, the groans, the sighs, I hate it, I hate it. And I used to hate it too. Oh my gosh, like I'm a type A, go, go, go. I don't have time to be writing down everything I ate. So this is what I tell them. Just start to tell yourself, I love to food journal. And they're like, I mean, I get the <laughs> eye rolls, the tisks. I get these like two-year-old responses, temper tantrums. I don't want to do this. And I said, listen, I, it's okay that you don't want to. It's okay that you believe you don't like that right now. Just tell yourself, I like to food journal. And then I tell them, here's another mantra to give yourself. Through food journaling, I get to discover the science of my body. Ooh. Oh, okay. That, that might be something my brain gets curious about. And I, I just want to give a shout out to, um, one of the, the ladies who recently went through my 30 days to thriving. Her name's Julie. And she was one of those really resistant to it. And by the end of the program, she's like, I got to tell you, I love to food journal. Like, I love it now. It's changed everything. I love how I feel. I love being able to see how food relates to my digestion, my focus, my energy. She's like, I, I can't believe I'm saying that I actually love to food journal. So it's possible. If you tell me you don't like to cook, I'm going to tell you, give yourself a reframe. I love to cook my own healthy meals. 
creating my own meals becomes this beautiful practice and self-care. Like just come up with these awesome reframes. Tell yourself that over and over. Next thing you know, you're going to start doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it's taking that focus off of what you don't want and putting it on what you do want. There's this thing, you probably know about it, uh, called target fixation. And I highly recommend listeners go like to YouTube and type in target fixation because it is hilarious. I mean, in a really sick sense, it's hilarious because what it is, is when racers or motorcyclists are, are, are driving on a track, let's say, and they, they, they look at what they where they don't want to go so maybe they look at the wall that they yeah. did, they didn't want to hit or they look at a pole or they look at the people in the stands they will drive towards what they where they didn't want to go and it's it, that's what it is it's target fixation it's fixating on the wrong target and then driving towards it and just like we do this uh, if you ever remember as a kid learning to ride a bike I remember doing this where I would I was riding my bike and I'd look over at something and then all of a sudden I was in the bushes because <laughs> exactly. my arms my steering was going where I was looking right and so we yeah. have to and, and or when you're first learning how to drive a car I noticed that I'd look and then I, my hands would turn I remember my driving instructor grabbing the wheel going no 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 you have to like learn how to keep your hands going keep the car going straight even though you're looking over your shoulder but target yes. fixation has us physically moving towards where we don't want to go and that's the same with our mind when we say I don't like to exercise. I'm not a morning person. I don't have enough money. I don't like to food journal. As long as we're saying what we don't want and focusing on what we don't want, then we're just going to keep keep focusing on more and more what we don't want to have. That's but right. The second we say, I love journaling. I yeah. want, I, I'd love to discover <laughs> the science of my body through journaling. Yes. And uh, as we start saying that, even though we, we know it's not what we want, at, at the beginning, but we start saying it, then then we then all these possibilities start opening up. We go, oh wow, I do have enough time to journal, and I am noticing all these things, and then the, the, all the positive things start coming out of it. So, or or if it's money, saying I, I I do have enough money to pay all my bills, and money fl- flows freely and easily to me. Like f- finding those fun affirmations, then all of a sudden, then you start seeing the possibilities of where you all the money you needed at the time is going to come to you. Um, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I have seen this so many times in, in both in other people and in myself. And it's just really, really funny how um, something as simple as, as looking, as focusing on where you want to go versus where you don't want to go can make this big, big difference. And, and that's why your mind zoning is, um, is fun and so powerful. Yeah, you're creating a new neural pathway, and that's what your body and your life will follow are, are those thoughts that we create. The, the last thing I want to make sure I share is, is a tip is really connecting with community. Um, a lot of us that when we start to make a lifestyle change, not everyone around us is in that same space. So our partner might not be interested in making a change. Our friends might not be interested. Our family might not be interested. And what happens is they are fighting subconsciously to keep everything the same too. And without any intention or malicious, you know, malicious intent, they will, um, unconsciously tried to sabotage your efforts. Oh, come on, you can have one. You know, we've all been there. Oh, what are you not eating today? You know, like little tiny little shaming comments too. Again, not not intending to be harmful. So I always tell people, make sure that you connect with a community that is on the same path that has similar goals to you do, that you do because people are scientific research three times more likely to succeed at reaching and maintaining their goals when they're connected with a community on the same path. So um, for, for those of you listening, Fitlandia has a closed Facebook group you can request to join. It's totally free and it's really inclusive. It's just a place for people to come in, share their recipe ideas, post up pictures of what they're eating. I love it when they post up, hey, I just had my workout and it's them, you know, getting off the treadmill all sweaty. Awesome, great. And we can all give each other 
virtual high fives. So those are those are three of the big um, tips that come out of the 11 small steps to a big transformation that I really want to share with your audience today. So thanks for that opportunity, Ashley. Absolutely. I really <laughs> agree with you. It's so much fun to have a have a community that supports you in your success. Uh, uh, friends and family often will do the crab in the bucket syndrome. They don't you know, they're afraid of that change that, that, you know, think about how we evolved for 2 million years. Change is life threatening. Change is the unknown. Change is different. And whether they have, um, some, some payoff, some, some sort of secondary gains to keeping you stuck or whether you being you all of a sudden losing weight or, 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 or having more energy or being healthier is threatening to them because maybe now they have to look at their own life or, or maybe they're, they're afraid you'll leave them. So many, I've heard so many stories of husbands, um, really worrying that their wives were like cheating on them or something silly because the wives all of a sudden started getting healthier and the husband started feeling insecure about their marriage. It's like, well, wh- why is she losing weight? Why is she, you know, why is she looking so good? Is it, you know, is it because she doesn't love me anymore? I mean, it's just so funny. People will make, make things mean things about themselves when it's something to do with them. So you're, yeah. you're really going to trigger by, by going on a health journey, you're really going to trigger your loved ones, you know, BS stories in their head about themselves and their life. And it's nothing to do with you, but you changing is going to trigger them. And so I absolutely agree with you that you don't get your support from your loved ones. It's nice if they give it to you, but get your support from people who, who don't have an ulterior motive to keeping you stuck, you know, at an unconscious level, get your support from a group of people that are all looking to make the right changes and keep you emotionally strong so that when you're, when one of your loved ones kind of jabs you or, or uh, tries to offer you that cookie or, you know, tries to get you that sugary drink at Starbucks because they think they're being nice, but right. they're, but they're kind of throwing you off your game that you've, you've got that, that, that support system to, to go to and to like chat with or to like vent with <laughs> that, yes. are, that are all there for you. So yeah, I absolutely agree um, that that can be great to keep keeping your, keeping your mindset on, <laughs> on the path. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Um, you know, I'd love to have you back on the show. Uh, I know you have a lot more to share and I'm excited <laughs> for your upcoming book. When is it coming out? It comes out October 17th. So not long now. <laughs> oh, you're on the home stretch. Absolutely. Uh, I'd love to hear your, um, your mind zoning for getting your book out. Maybe you should publish some mind zoning for <laughs> aspiring authors. Oh my gosh. This, this process has inspired me to develop a whole bunch of mind zoning audio recordings, but certainly I give myself my own little mantras. Like it's, it's easy for me to get this book launched. Um, you know, I practice, <laughs> I totally practice what I preach, by the way, for any of you listening, launching a book is, uh, it's more intense for me anyhow than planning a wedding. Um, there's that much detail involved with it. So I would love it. I'm so proud of it. I'm so excited for it. So I'd love to have uh, so many of you check it out and get the bonuses that come with it at uh, fitlyandofitness.com forward slash strategic dash vitality. Because by golly, I'm going to make sure it's out by October 17th. You're going to do it. And we're all <laughs> holding you to it. You're going to do it. Know, and there's a, an angry mob of listeners waiting to read it. <laughs> Uh, that are, are going to chase you down if you don't get it out. <laughs> I know, I know. I put it out there on the airwaves now. I have. I, it's it's happening. The trains left the station. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, uh, Christopher, for coming on the show and uh, check out Fitlandia podcast. We got to support our other uh, holistic health podcasts out there. Um, I'm excited for my interview that I was on your show. That's, that's going to be coming out soon. That was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I shared, uh, my wonderful techniques for, for eliminating anxiety, which, which is great. I look forward to hearing feedback from your listeners on, uh, on that technique and how it uh, helps them. Oh, I can't wait for all of you listening. You have to go and rate and review Ashley's interview because it's, 
the technique is really pretty incredible. And I know she and I would both love to hear what you got out of it and how you used it in your everyday life because it's so good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, well, I'm excited. I'm going to go do some uh, to some mind zoning. I'm going to go find <laughs> a mind zoning for being a better podcaster. You should make one of those too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me, Ashley. I love what you're doing as well. And it's been an honor. Enjoy what you heard today on your episode of the Learn to Health podcast. Did something move you, inspire you? Did you get great information that's going to change your life? Awesome. That's exactly what I'm here to do is to help you gain your health back. Please turn around and share this. If this is something that's helped you in any way, share this with those you love. Love the Learn True Health podcast and want to support us? Awesome. You can go to takeyoursupplements.com and you could support us that way. You'll get access to amazing supplements that are just really great quality for a great price. And there'll be someone on the other end of the line to help you pick out your supplements that are right for you. That's takeyoursupplements.com or join our membership, learntruehealth.com slash join. That's another great way to support our podcast, support our movement, and you'll be supporting yourself. Gain more information, wonderful videos, wonderful trainings, and you'll also be able to share those with those you love as well. So go to learntruehealth.com slash join. Want something fun for free? Go to learntruehealth.com and right there on the front page, you'll see where you can get our free cookbook. I spent a lot of time making it and it was so much fun. It's really delicious, healthy recipes. And you can also get our seven day doctor course Uh, right there. It's seven days of naturopathic videos sent right to your inbox and you can learn from top naturopaths on how to gain health naturally. So that's takeyoursupplements.com for wonderful supplements learnyourhealth.com slash join to join our awesome membership which is only open for a limited time you can get our free healthy cookbook and you can also get for free seven days of wonderful naturopathic videos sent to you just go to learnyourhealth.com and you'll see it right there on the front page thank you so much for being a listener and thank you for sharing and helping others let's spread this information and turn this ripple into a tidal wave 